That's today. Wow. Can you imagine a crowd like this at like one o'clock or some ridiculous time in the morning? On a, on a Monday slash Tuesday, right? Think of that. What a compliment. And it is true, she had nobody at these rallies. That's, you know, that's a poll. Look, Mr. Wall, look at Mr. Wall over there, this guy. It was always my ambition to buy a suit like that and wear it one time. Well, I came in in a sanitation uniform last week, and that worked out pretty good. Because Joe Biden, in one of his crazy moments, said that we were all garbage. But they've shut him down. They took the election away. They walked in and they said, uh, you're not running anymore. You're out. Can you believe? They stole the election from a president. They stole the election. Can you imagine that? They said, you're not, you know, they use the word coup. I, I think it's worse than a coup in a sense, because a coup, there's a little back and forth. They said, Joe, you're out. That crazy, horrible human being, Nancy Pelosi, who cheats like hell. She sold. She sold. You know what she said last night? She said, and, and there's another guy, the guy. How do you explain that guy? They say, well, we'll get ready to start impeaching him. Now, how bad, how bad are people like that? They're just trouble for our country. They're bad, sick people. They took two impeachments, and they wasted all that time and money and energy when we should be focusing on making America great again. They're horrible people. I mean, Nancy Pelosi started with nothing. She's worth $200 million. You know, she sold. She had a big position in Visa, and she sold it. And the day after she sold it, the Justice Department announced that they were under this massive investigation. You're a stock guy, right? They're under a massive investigation. So I don't know what happened, but I don't imagine the stock went up. History would tell you the stock went down. Did it go down a lot? It went down a lot. So they have this big position. She sells her stock. Hours after she sells her stock, they announce that Visa is under massive investigation. The stock goes tumbling down. She's a crooked person. She is a bad person. Evil. She's an evil, sick, crazy bear. Oh, no. It starts with a B, but I won't say it. I want to say it. I want to say it, but Franklin Graham said, sir, I love your speaking ability, and I love your storytelling. But honestly, it would be even better if you wouldn't use foul language. And I don't use much, you know, every once in a while. And it's never a real bad word. It's, you know, it's like never bad. And uh, so I try to adhere, but he's wrong about one thing. It is a little better when you use the foul language, because there's more emphasis. No, but these are bad people. These are bad. Uh, Adam Shifty Shift. I call him Pencil Neck. He's got the smallest neck I've ever seen. He's got about a four. And he's got the biggest head. So I don't know how the neck can hold the head. He's an unattractive guy, both inside and out. And this guy can end up being a senator. But don't worry, we've been beating him for eight years. We've been beating these people. We've been beating him. They impeach me, we win. They send me down the Records Act, the Records Act. And we won in Florida. We won. We win. But, you know, we have to take a lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of money, which is what they want. A lot of time, a lot of money. This way, we can stop the one guy we don't want to fight is Trump. We can stop him from getting the Republican nomination. And I got the Republican nomination record time. Record time. And let's keep going, and maybe we can stop him from winning the presidency. But uh, that's looking pretty good tomorrow, I'll tell you. They give, they give us probably a 95. What do you think, a 95% or something like that? But don't believe it. 
Don't believe it. Go out and vote. Remember the story of Hillary. Just remember. That's why I tell you the story. She was in bad shape when she called me up that night. And by the way, she called up and conceded, and then spent seven years on saying how she was a good sport. Oh, she's a wonderful, she's a lovely person, Crooked Hillary. But you know what? She's smart. And, but she wasn't like, she lied a lot. I mean, a lot. But nobody lies like this Kamala. Kamala, he will not ever frack in Pennsylvania. My whole case is fracking. And he will open the borders immediately. No, no, no. I'm going to close the borders. However, if people want to come in, they can come in legally. They have to come in through a process. We need people. But Kamala is, I mean, this is known. She's a very low IQ person. And we don't need a low IQ individual. We've had that for four years. And our country's going down the drain. We're going to turn our country around. I will end inflation very quickly. You know how we're going to end it? By drilling and drilling and drill, drill, drill. Energy is going to bring everything down. Energy is going to bring it down. And I will stop the invasion of criminals coming across our border. I will strengthen our military. I will restore peace in the world. And I will rescue the American dream. We're going to have the American dream back soon. Together, we will begin the four greatest years in the history of our country. And we will launch the most extraordinary economic boom the world has ever seen. If you vote for Lion Kamala, you will have four more years of misery, failure, and disaster our country may never recover from. I don't believe that our country can take any more of this I, I, without just gun. I don't believe it can take any more. It's going to be uh, — can't take this. This is — this is — this is abnormal abuse. Abnormal abuse. And I heard somebody said the wall. I built 571 miles of wall, which is much more than I said I was going to build. And you know, it really worked. Walls work. Two things work. What are the two things? Walls and wheel. They're the only two things that never get obsolete, right? Walls and wheels. A wall and a wheel. It's always going to be around. Other things, they have the beautiful computers. You know, you buy a computer. Oh, this is the greatest. Two weeks later, it's obsolete. That goes on. I don't know how people do it. We have the king of computers. We have the king of everything endorsed me. Elon Musk. And he brought that rocket ship down two weeks ago. I never said 22 stories. It's like monster. You don't know, is it big or small? It's a monster. 22 stories. And you know that story. I've told it a couple of times. I love the story because I, I really, the best part is I'm talking to one of the most important guys in the world, and I say, wait a minute, could I just watch something? I see something on tele I have the television muted, right? I'm looking at this crazy racket. And I saw it leaving a little while before, and it was all beautiful white. Now it's absolutely burned to a crisp. You know, it goes 10,000 miles an hour. The heat is at levels that nobody can experience. So it's a little, you know, rough. It's a little rough on the paint job. And it's coming in, and I'm watching, and I'm holding this very important person, one of the most important people. But, you know, when you were the president, and now it's very possible, like maybe 95 percent, that you're going to be the president again, they hold. No, they hold. So I say, uh, do you mind holding for a minute? I have to see this. And I put the phone down. That guy was holding, like, for an hour and a half. I don't, he never got off the phone. He, I wish he would have hung up. I would have felt better. Because I picked up the phone later. I said, oh, wow. Hello? Hello? He goes, hello. Anyway, but it, it was so exciting, so I'm watching it. And this monstrous thing is going down, right? And it's coming down. It's, first of all, doing all sorts of flips up in the air. This, I would not want to be on that sucker. I don't care how good Elon is. I said, Elon, you wouldn't get me in that ship under any circumstances. But it's coming down. It's a little rough. And now, all of a sudden, it starts to slow down as it gets to the ground. 
Then it starts to move over. Then it gets a little bit out of control, it looks like. A little out of And the left part of the bottom is going to hit rip, just rip that big gantry. That's this, you know, whatever the hell it is that holds it. <laughs> and it's coming in. Ah, oh, and I didn't know it was Elon's. I just assumed, you know, he loves this stuff. He's in a class. But it's coming in, and it's going to rip the gantry. I say, oh, this is bad. This is going to be bad. I close my eyes. All of a sudden, boy, you have this massive flame coming out of the left-hand side of the bottom. It was this big jet engine. It pushes it away, and it's coming down, and then it settles into a plate, and then those arms grab it like you grab your baby, just like you grab your little baby. And it hugged it and just put it down, and it, there it was. There it was. And I called Elon. I said, was that you? He said, yes. And he said, and by the way, he said this. And by the way, this is something I'd never said because I didn't even think of it before when I told this story. He said, and by the way, I'm heading up to Pennsylvania to campaign for you. That was two weeks ago. He's still there. Can you believe it? Because he considers the election more important than rockets, more important than anything. He helped us out a lot in North Carolina and parts of Georgia where they needed, desperately needed, the Starlink. I had no idea what Starlink. They called me up. They called me up in Georgia. Elon's incredible. He has Starlink. He's got — everything has to do with stars and stuff. Very complex stuff. No, he's amazing. But, sir, I know that you know Elon Musk because I read your endorsement. You know, he says it's the most important endorsement he'll ever make. It was such a nice thing. And he said he wants to help. And I didn't know he was going to help to this extent. He went up. He won the big case today, too. He won the case. Because huh? I don't know, he did something that I, I don't know what he was doing, but he did something with lotteries, and you know, he's in a different, he's amazing. He's gonna do lotteries and this and that and make your life fun, and he's having a good time. You know, he usually is in a lab and he's happy there. All of a sudden, he's escaped the lab and now he's out, and the public adores him. He's a great guy. The public absolutely adores him. But the man from North Carolina, great guy. You know, North Carolina was hit so hard with the water. The hurricane was essentially a massive pile of water. It was a big water hurricane, the biggest we've ever had. And they were so flooded. Areas that had never virtually seen water were, had, were turned out to be lakes. They ripped houses, trees. Everything was ripped down by the power of the tides that were going back and forth. It was terrible. And this man said, uh, if you could ask him for Help with Starlink. We cannot get it. It's very hard to get. And I called Elon, and he got it immediately for them. He got it so much that <laughs> he had it there immediately. So much that that you know they couldn't even believe it. He said, "This has saved a lot of lives." They they had no communication in North Carolina, which, by the way, we're leading. In fact, somebody said. They picked up stakes. There's no more ads. There's no more anything. That's usually a good sign. That's usually a sign that they're not going to win. But one of the reasons they're not going to win is because FEMA did such a bad job. So FEMA, you know, we had a great FEMA. We did good. But they spent most of their money, as you know, on illegal migrants coming in. They spent, they spent so much money that they didn't have the money to take care of the people from North Carolina. But we will be there on January 20th, because on January 20th, that's when you were so mad. But they pulled up stakes. Historically, when you pull up stakes and stop advertising and leave, historically, you're in pretty good shape in this state. Is that correct, politically? Because I haven't done this as long as some of the as well and as long as well i think i've done it better actually because i ended up being president so i probably but some of our great politicians have done this for a lot longer than me so let me ask you all of these senators and when you pull up stakes and leave historically doug bergham was so incredible he really is isn't he is he a classic his wife is much better she blows him away right 
Catherine is much better. But, Doug, when you pull up stakes and you stop advertising, doesn't that generally mean that it's over, right? It's over. Doug is cautious. He doesn't want to. He thinks this is a trick question. <laughs> no, it means it's over. And uh, I think it's over in a lot of places. I think we're going to see some incredible stuff tomorrow. But, but it, won't, it won't matter. It, it won't matter as long as you, as long as you go out and vote. It's, nothing's going to matter because it's in our — you know the expression, the ball is in their hands, the ball is in our hands. I can't do a thing about it. And now you're going to go out there later today. And you're going to show us something and vote for me, and I will deliver rising wages, soaring incomes, and a colossal surge of jobs. You're going to, we're going to use things. What's the most beautiful word in the dictionary? We're going to create wealth, opportunity for Americans of every race, religion, color, and creed. But I have to tell you one quick story, because I'm so proud. They're going to build this great big plant. They're building it. They're going to build it. China's going to build a plant, and it's going to destroy Michigan, destroy it, destroy Detroit. Everyone's going to move out. And I heard about it through a friend of mine that builds plants. That's what he does. He builds plants. He builds them better than anybody. John. Let's just call him John. And he was sitting there, and I was at the Economic Club of Detroit a couple of weeks ago. But I told John a year ago, I want to see a plant. And he said, well, I'll have to take you to Mexico. I said, I don't want to see a plant. I want to see a plant here. I want a big one. He said, we don't really do too many big ones in the United States anymore. I said, what is that all about, Mexico? He said, well, China's building some of the biggest plants anywhere in the world. They're building them in Mexico. And I said, well, I'm not happy about that. I don't want to see the damn plant in Mexico. It wouldn't look right if I'm in Mexico looking at plants. Do we agree, sir? It wouldn't look right. And uh, so he said, all right, look, I say, forget it. Then I thought about it, and I was making the speech in Detroit, and I said, a couple of weeks before, I said, if they want to build a plant in Mexico owned by China so that they can save all of the costs associated with bringing their cars and all of the things, I'm going to put 100 percent tariff on every single car coming out of that plant. And if that's not enough, I'll make it 200, 300, 500, 800. I don't give a damn what it is. And they're not going to have one car made in that plant that ever crosses that border, which is right next to them. Anyway, so I see John in the audience, and I gave them that notice a little before, and it was public. And I see him, and I send my people. I say, after I speak, make sure he comes to the back. I want to see him backstage. So I see John. I say, John, how's that big monster plant that's going to rip apart our country, but it's going to hurt South Carolina, Tennessee, and all the other places that do a lot of cars? It's going to hurt everybody. It's going to hurt the country. How is that plant doing? He said, sir, they've given it up because they think you're going to win, and they think you're going to tariff them, and they think they're going to lose their share. And, sir, they've given up that plant. It's not going to be built anymore. So I saved Michigan, and I saved Detroit, and we're going to let them build that plant. But you know where we want them to build it? Right here, we want them to build it. And then they won't have any tariffs to pass. They won't have any tariffs, and they're going to use you to operate that big sucker, and it's, they can build as big as they want with no tariffs, I said. Let them know we'd love to have their investment. They're going to build it right here in Detroit, or at a minimum, they're going to build it someplace in the United States, and they won't have any problems. So that's the same. So I saved Detroit and Michigan a lot. That alone, and I did that without even being president. How about that? They said he's going to win. They told John, we think Trump is going to win, and he's not going to let us make anything, and he's going to do things that we don't know. This guy is crazy. Because, you know, I charge China hundreds of billions of dollars in taxes and tariffs. They paid us. Not one other president. And, you know, we're going to get along great with China. We're going to get along good. I want to get along with them. President Xi was great. Until COVID came, then I wasn't so thrilled with him. 
But we did a great job in that. You know, we get — we went back. Nobody knew what the hell it was. We did a great job. We get credit on our military. No wars. We did — no wars. I had no wars. <laughs> Remember when crooked Hillary Clinton — Remember when crooked Hillary was screaming during a debate, he's going to charge wars, he's going to have wars, he's going to prosecute wars all over the place. Look at him. He's a very volatile person. I'm actually not. I'm a very calm person. She's the one that's volatile. But he said he's a very volatile person. He'll say, no, I stopped the wars with my being volatile. Nobody had a war. We didn't have any wars, except that we finished a war that we had. We beat ISIS. 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate was taken down. And it was done in a matter of weeks. When our stupid generals, our terrible generals, that you know, the, the guys up top, like Millie, like Kelly, real losers. Kelly was dumb as a rock. I'll never do that again. I let people — I say, give me a letter of resignation. Yes, sir, I'd like to say — I said, you get — just give me — you know, Biden never fired anybody. That's why he never had a bad book written about him. No, and also, number two, nobody cared. <laughs> when I fire somebody, every major publisher in the world, will you say something bad? I had one person who was so complimentary. Sir, you're the greatest president that ever lived, blah, blah, blah. Then she gets a, a show, but they only want to hire her if she's — I have all these letters. There's never been a better president. She goes in the show. I didn't like him. He was terrible. What a terrible human being. These people are sick. But you know what? All we can do is keep winning. That's all. Win, win, win. But a vote for Trump means your groceries. Such a word I hear all the time, because I do like to mix it up with people, more so than my consultants. I think the people are much smarter than my consultants. My consultants are good, but I get much better. Like, people say groceries, right? Who, I haven't used that. You know, it's such a sort of an old term. They say my groceries are so much more. I haven't — you know, the term is just like an old term. And it's a beautiful, but — they say about my groceries were so expensive, they'll be cheaper. Your paychecks will be higher. Your streets will be safer and cleaner. Your communities will be richer. And your future as an American will be much better than it ever has been when I get in. Because this will be the golden age of America. And that's what I'm calling it. I'm telling the press. I hope you put it in. Isn't that a beautiful phrase? The golden age. I like to brand — I like to brand things, like I brand Pocahontas. And, you know, I have a, I do a lot of branding. I'm a, one of the greatest branders in the world. A lot of them were Republicans, so — but they're all now friends of mine, so I can't talk. Some of my greatest branding was on the Republicans during the primaries, but they're all friends of mine, most of them. Uh, some of them. Yeah, most of them are. Most of them are. But, you know, I don't talk about that. They — once — once the battle is over, I take those words, I put them away permanently in some cases. On occasion, I'll bring them back out. But just a few months ago, in a beautiful field in Pennsylvania, an assassin tried to stop our great movement, greatest movement in history. But that brush with death did not stop us by any means. It only made us more determined to finish the job that we had only just started. That was not a pleasant day, I will tell you. That was not a pleasant day. But many people say that God saved me in order to save America. Many people have seen it so many times. And with your help, we will fulfill that extraordinary mission together. We're going to fill it together. We are going to fulfill it together. It's a beautiful expression, and, you know, I think it might be true. I have sons that are here right now, Don and Eric, and they're — they're great people. But they're really great shooters. They're like — top-of-the-line shooters. They know so much about it. They say it was almost impossible for somebody — yeah, a miracle. It was. It was a miracle. That's the miracle right up there, right? But I didn't realize that. 
But from the distance that they were, they say it was a miracle. Well, if I didn't turn to the right to look at that beautiful graph that we had up, having